Hi, in this video I'm going to cover Flex in SolidWorks. Flex comes in with four mods and I'm going to cover all the four in this short video that I have prepared for you. So stay tuned and watch. Hi, I'm Aryan and I help creative minds and engineers to bring their ideas into reality through learning SolidWorks with a very easy approach. So if this is something for you, keep watching. <laughs> Oh no, subscribe. If this is something for you, subscribe and keep watching. If you haven't watched the previous episode, I created this model in SolidWorks called Advanced Modeling in SolidWorks. It, it's not that advanced, but it's kind of advanced. And if you remember, the last step I did was to use, or one of the last steps I did was to use flex. And I created this conical shape because it was, it was a cylindrical geometry and I turned that into a conic conic cone I turned, that, I turned that into a cone now let's go back and do some uh, flexing on this model first of all where do you find flex here duh no you don't find it there I have already added there and you don't have it here guys if you're new to the channel I'm gonna explain this one more time but if you have already been watching my episodes Every time I come across an, a, a feature in SOLIDWORKS that is not on your default menu, just go to your search bar. First of all, change it to commands because there are four mods on that. Change it to commands and then just type the name of that feature. It will show up here and then you can drag and drop onto your menu. Done? Done. If you don't want to do this, there is another way and that is insert features. Then you get all of that here. Again, you can find flex somewhere here, right? So flex, as I said, there are four different uh, mods for flex, bending, twisting, tapering, and stretching. We're going to start with bending. The name is on it. First of all, ignore everything you see on its property manager. As always, I'm going to close everything and open them one by one. We have five of them, flex input, pl trim plane one and two, which are very important and triad as well as flex options. So open flex input. Obviously our component is the input and on default SOLIDWORKS places these two uh, trim planes that is trim plane number one in green and trim plane number two in red on two furthest point on your selected component or components in this case it looks like this and it's not that pretty so before I change anything about the planes or if I before I move them let's just see what I get when I select bending there is an option called hard edges that I can check or uncheck. Leave it at that, leave it at checked. And then I have one radius and one angle. There are two ways that you can define a bending on your component. One through the radius, that is if I wanna say, okay, I wanna bend it with a radius of five, then this component will be wrapped so many times over that it doesn't make any sense. And probably even though you see the preview, if you click okay, you're gonna get an error. So instead of doing that, I'm going to just go ahead and type an angle value and just move it gradually for you so you see the effect. So this is bending it and as I change the angle of the bend, the radius changes as well. You can see that. I'm at uh, 45 radius. Now if I do 360, I have created a full circle and yes, it can be done i think the preview is not lying to me and this is my component now even though it has worked i have to give you a very very serious warning and heads up about flex because flex is one of the heavy features on solidworks and you don't want to be using it for like everywhere this is truly an advanced feature and it cannot be or it should not be used every time you want to bend something because it's not the ideal way of bending technically a lot of times you're gonna have to work with wrap as an example and before i go and describe what i just did or evaluate this together with you i'm gonna test something and we're gonna sit down here for the next 20 seconds or so and watch how much of ram is this single feature is occupying in solidworks we have done this before. We go to the evaluate tab and we click on performance evaluation. Look, 96.23% of all 
the rebuilding time that goes to this model belongs to Flex. And everything else combined is a 3.77%. Do you know what that means? All these features are taking 3%. This feature alone is getting 97% of rebuilding time. And that is ridiculously high. Because if I go ahead and add something to this model and then rebuild it, 3.14 seconds goes to this. Now, if I do that twice, or if the model was complicated, more complicated, then you do the math. So you do not want to use flex just at all costs. It is only there when you really don't have any other option. Okay. I'm glad I showed this to you. All right. That was bending. I'm going to edit the feature and then move it back to zero degrees. So we get the default picture. Now you might want to ask what these two planes are for. So the three planes one and two are actually your two. You use these planes to do anything to your component, bend, twist, taper, or stretch. Anything you do is being done through these two planes. And these planes can change in angle and distance. So if I want to change their angle, I can just move it like this. You can see that. And if I, for example, leave it like that. So the trim plane number two almost sits perfectly on this side of my component. Then I bend it. You will see the result will look different. Look, compare this, compare this to the previous bending that I showed you a couple of seconds ago. You can define how you want to bend it. You should not go with the default necessarily because as I said, the default planes are furthest points and you don't necessarily want. Angle is not the only thing that you can change about these planes. You can also go ahead and grab them by these arrows and move them. And this way, I only move one plane at a time. Look at this. If I bring plane one here and plane two here, then I start bending. Look at that. Only the distance between the plane one and plane two starts bending and the other parts of the component stay straight as they were. Look, I only bent the distance between the two trim planes. So the trim planes are there only to define the boundary that you want to apply your flex on. You know what? Let's leave it at that. That was bending. I'm going to go ahead and then apply a new flex to this. All right. Twisting, just like its name. It has a lot of good usage as well, but again, you don't necessarily have to do it through flex. Look at that. Just like it's a uh, preview, it's bending my component. I'm going to leave it at that and not talk about the trim planes because the same applies to the trim plane. But look at this. This is a good example of twisting for flex. If I extrude this, uh, I don't know, 1000. Is it too much? No, it's not too much. We leave it at that. We go to flex, we select it, we set it to twist, and then we keep, I don't know, 1000 times or degrees. And then I leave it at that. I kind of created a drill bit. I mean, the base sketch probably was not good enough, but you could do stuff like that. You could create braiding, or if you just want to twist your component, you can. Again, flex and tapering, which I showed you in this example. Let's just go back actually and talk about this here. This is a perfect example of tapering. And you could see how the component looks like before and after the tapering. This is before. This is only 0.9. I'm going to put it to zero and show you what happens. Look, this is tapering, right? Don't confuse flex with FEA or simulation because what flex does is not true deformation of your component. For example, if I wanted to draw like a V in SOLIDWORKS, let's just do that. If I draw something like that and I extruded it and I wanted to go to flex and this time work with stretch. And if I stretch this, the angle between these two bars wouldn't change. They're not going to be deformed perfectly. Look what happens. 
I mean, the angle does change. I'm sorry. I was wrong about the angle, but uh, they don't get deformed. So this is not a true representation of deformation. It actually adds material to it. So it's not a simulation. It just stretches or compresses your component. You can go to the negative area and it compresses it. And as you can see, the thickness of your bars also reduce because they are being compressed. So that's the stretching of flex. When and when not you should be working with flex is basically try not to work with flex at all. But if you're here, if you have searched for flex in SolidWorks and you landed upon this video, then you probably know about it and you want to try some stuff. It's not something I can put into words and say, okay, you should work with flex in this situation and not work with it in that situation. It's case dependent, but if you can find a way around flex, you should take it. All right, I hope you liked the video. If this was something new, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And most important of all, go to the description below or on the top right corner, click on the link and go to the website, watch the webinar. Trust me, you're gonna wanna thank me later. There is a one hour webinar on my website that helps you build 10 good habits and replace your bad habits with these good habits because I'm sure you are making at least six or seven of those bad habits causing you to waste a lot and a lot and a lot of time. So go spend one hour, save many hours of your time. It's free. Just go do it. See you next week.